say it. Hey, nice to be here. Well, boys. It's a lively look. Yeah. Oh, yes, we've got a lively look. We've got a pop concert on Ready, Steady, Cook today, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. We're all going to go for it. I don't know what we're going to be cooking, though. But, boys, I've got to ask you before we get to that stage, do you like cook on sort of, you know, growing your own vegetables and stuff like that? I live on the first floor, so I've got, I've got mm. herbs and I've got a little flat roof and I grow tomatoes, that's it. Yeah, lovely. I grow a few things at home. What about you? I've got um, a little courtyard out the back and um, rosemary, basil and stuff like yeah. that, always on the go. Are they your staff? Um, no, unfortunately not. <laughs> the little plants. I talk to them sometimes, though, Ross. Yeah. I know. <laughs> You've got to talk to them. You've got to yeah. talk to your flowers. Well, I wonder if our guest on the programme today talked to their flowers. They are gold medal winners, ladies and gentlemen, of what? Let's find out as we welcome from Wilkshire, Millie Carmichael. <laughs> Hello, Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Hello. Pleased to meet you. Well, a part-time horticulturist and, and winning awards. Indeed. What do you do the rest of the time then? Um, I'm a sexual health worker. Oh. And I work with. <laughs> but that would raise a titter. Yeah. Um, I um, work with the teenage pregnancy team in Swindon. Marvelous group of people, but they're far too much fun. So I only do that four days a week. Ah, so... that's what I like. The fact that they're fun. <laughs> and you say sexual health worker. Does that mean is it something on the increase or something that uh, requires less and less people in your kind of no, position? No, more and more. More, more and merrier. more. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So there's all sorts of problems out there, and I think our chef's probably got one or two problems in this bag. I Let's I have a look what you've brought along there, Millie. Go on, give it a good old shake right. for a Flock it out. Yeah, <laughs> go on, flock it all out, and then we'll go <laughs> up there. there we OK, go. tell us all. Oh, Obnobs. Right, all right. Yeah. OK. I think they're Oti biscuits, actually. Oti biscuits. Anyway, uh, I've got rhubarb, I've got mascarpone cheese, mm. I've got white chocolate ice cream, I've got hazelnuts, I've got ginger, and the biscuits. Lovely. And how so much did you spend? I spent £7.54p. Wow. Well, you're allowed to spend £7.50. We're not worried around about this time. <laughs> yeah, we do. We're not. And, uh, well, apparently there's something else that you've, uh, you've got for our chef. Well, um, I have got a surprise. OK. I'm lucky um, he hasn't looked under there. At what the college that we go to, college oh, grows... My. Giant lemons. Oh, wow. And um, this is one of the giant lemons, and I'd like to add that to my bag if I may. Wow, well, look at that. And that's... It's, oh, a, it's real a real lemon. Real man. Smell it's real. That's gorgeous. It's a real look lemon. at that. Isn't that a big lemon, eh? <laughs> <laughs> You'd get a lot of gin and tonic out of that, wouldn't you, eh? God, dude. You'd have to have a party, wouldn't you? We, yes, well, we I do. I think it's a Sometimes. lovely bag that you've you brought much. along here, Millie. Okay. What do you think, then, James? I think that's a big lemon. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah, great bag. And mm. um, do you want some cream for that? Yeah, ice, <laughs> ice and slice, anyone? Yeah. No, yeah, um, we'll Lovely. come up with some great stuff oh, with that lot. I'm sure yeah, you will, it. and um, it will incorporate lemon. Even though we've got lemon in our store, it doesn't matter, ladies and gentlemen. It's always nice to see something unusual. Now, there is, uh, we're about to meet a friend of yours, someone you work we are with. Indeed. Yes. Okay, yes, yeah, she's also from Wilkshire. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Charlotte Howard. <laughs> Very, very, very so spangly. Look at you. Well, spangly. I don't mm. often get to look glam. I'm normally covered in mud. So okay. Well, we've got a part-time uh, horticulturist there who works four days a week uh, as a sexual health therapist. What about you then? What do you do? Well, I'm a full-timer. I'm a full-time horticulturist. Full-time horticulturist. Right. When I'm not studying, I'm actually gardening too. Mm. So I'm loving it. Really yeah. nice. Yes. And uh, do you grow lots of lovely things? Yeah. I, well, I tend to grow lots of lovely things in other people's gardens, but I get quite sort of. Get quite covered over covetous all their vegetables and things. So oh, yes, I do look after. Nothing wrong with that. Let's yeah. see how good a shopper you are. Okay. There we are. Yeah, give it a good old steak, Michelle. That's it, my darling. Oh, oh is that a oh, bit of pot salute? Oh, just a lot of it amongst the thing. There Please you go. Tell have, us what we've got along. I have all the food groups going okay. on here because I like to, I like my carbs. Mm. Um, one of the things I thought I'd try is um, I never knew anything about vegetables before Glowed. I started it, so I thought I'd have a go at some Jerusalem artichokes. Mm -hmm. Never done anything with. Well, mm -hmm. I don't cook, but okay. I'd like to see what you could do with those. Mm -hmm. I love my meat. Um, Millie's a veggie, so um, close your ears, Millie. But um, <laughs> a nice bit of sirloin there, yeah. and um, partial to a bit of port salute. Port salute, salute some gorgeous potatoes and asparagus. Yeah. Mm. And uh, have you also bought a little addition for our Ross here? I do. I noticed Ross was looking quite smug, but he thought James was having the big lemon. But you thought you've seen a big lemon. <laughs> Just wait till you see this little... Whoa! We're playing rugby at school. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that a world record lemon then? This one is actually weighs six pounds, but our college, what Lackham College, where we grow them, actually grew one that was eleven pounds back wow. in the eighties. So it was almost wow. twice that size. Oh, the wow. secret is, if you want to know, alpaca poo. 
Alpaca poo. All oh, yes. right, then how much did you spend, by the way? £7.55. OK, you have a bit of a chat with Ross about lemons. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll be back. James, what are you going to cook for lovely Millie? Come on, then. Right, we're going to take the lemon in half and we're going to do a lemon and a rhubarb sponge, but sweeten out with all honey. Yeah. OK, first of all, so a tray sponge pudding. We're going to take some of the oat biscuits, um, use them as a base and do a ginger and mascarpone cheesecake um, with some caramelised hazelnuts. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to get the other half of the lemon, we're going to scoop some of it out, use some of the inside, sweeten it with icing sugar crumb it up with some of the biscuits and uh, ice cream and do like a baked Alaska you know, mm. in like a half a lemon. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that's a lot of them. No, I, think oh, I, might, a... I might get a smoothie in there as well out of the ice cream and stuff. You might get a little yeah. bit of a smoothie. Does that inspire you? Does that sound Sounds good? Sounds gorgeous. Or a crumble. Yeah. There mm -hmm. you go, the rest of that lot. OK, yeah, crumble, all sorts of yeah, things. Yeah. Yeah. Look well, lots of desserts, <laughs> OK, my favourite is the old rhubarb soup, you know. I yeah. love a rhubarb soup. Make that at home, that's great. But uh, let's find out what you're going to be getting then, Charlie. Well, he doesn't need any help to be smooth, does he? Look, I know. Oh, Mr. He's Burley. got youth on his side, isn't he, uh, mate? Unlike disgust. you, Ross. Now, listen, <laughs> what are you going to do? Oh, Rossi. Well, I think yeah. because, we're gonna, because we've got this fantastic lemon, everything's going to be about the lemon. Oh, look. But, wow. Go on, mate. Away right. you go. <laughs> There you go. Look at that, eh? That's a jolly swizz, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's a bit like going out with a girl with a wonder bra on. Really? really? <laughs> <laughs> How could you say such a thing? <laughs> 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 Taking the piss. Oh, <laughs> I, I, think, I think what we're going to do is we're going to make a lemon meringue pie. We're going to cook, um, uh, especially if, if we could have a little bit of ginger from the other side, possibly. Uh, beef with lemon, uh, uh, potatoes with lemon, asparagus with lemon, uh, uh, lemon and artichoke um, uh, soup, uh, lemon and, and porcelain. Um, lemon and lemon. Uh, lemon. Yeah, a lot of there's going to be a lot of lemon going on. A lot of lemon going on. A lot of lemon going on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Citrus Show. They've got 20 minutes to produce <laughs> wonderful lemony dishes. When I say ready, steady, let's get citrusing. All right. Now you've heard about here, we're going to do some lovely crumbles and things because we've got the appropriate. We've got some lovely OG biscuits. We've got the mascarpone. We've got ice cream. We've got hazelnuts and uh, the ginger there too. So there's going to be a lovely cheesecake this side, along with some ice cream going inside a scooped out lemon to make a rather nice sort of meringue thing going on there. So all sorts of lovely uh, dishes that uh, are a bit of a bit on the sweet tooth, really. What about here? Well, lemon is very much the name of the game because that's going to feature yeah, with our potatoes. We're that's going to have a nice lemon sauce to accompany our nice marble flake steak there. Yeah. We're going to have a lemon sauce to go with our asparagus. What about the old Jerusalem artichokes? Don't get confused. They're not the same as globe artichokes, these guys. And we've got the port salut with, again, lemon, lemon, lemon. Looking forward to it. Well, stay tuned for the next 20 minutes. It's all coming your way. First of all, let's find out what our chef's making here. A bit of pastry or what? No, I'm doing a sponge, mate. Oh, the sponge. And is this yeah. going to be baked in the oven yeah, or microwave? I'm, no, I'm doing it all in the oven. OK, so the next one's going in the oven. Hint. Sometimes we do do things in the microwave, just to show people how you can actually do things quite quick. But this one's going in the oven. Now, what about quantities, then, right. Chef? Well, Can I get you anything? No, I'm, I think... Oh, yeah, you can get me some self-raising flour, please. A bit of self-raising flour. OK, my man. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm mm -hmm. going to use... Get this on zero. Four ounces. Yeah, OK. Which is a little bit more than this. Mm -hmm. So four ounces of butter, four ounces of sugar. Yeah. And then what we do is we cream these together. Okay. Okay. So first things first, Ains. Yeah. Next, there you go. That's about right. Lane, there yeah. you go. In we go, there, mate. Okay. Lovely. So get that cream in. Mm -hmm. Now. Okay. We're going to add four eggs to that in a minute. Okay. Four eggs. Yeah. Oh, four wow. eggs. Okay, chef. It binds it together better and it holds it better as so you well. You want the four eggs going in almost now? Yeah. Once that's creamed together. Okay. Oh, great. Right. And what's this going to be quite rich, isn't it, eh? Exactly, but the thing is, we've got um, rhubarb going in it, we've got half of this lemon going in it, so... Yeah. And we're okay. just going to whack it all wow, together. Wow, look at that, look at that. I'm going to get the lot. seeds out of this. Wow, it's just so it's lovely, isn't it? That lovely thick pith there. Lovely, OK. Right. And, uh, obviously, we've got a little bit of curdling going on here. And you've said it before to me on the show, this is the stage where a lot of people panic, don't yeah, panic. Yeah, don't worry about it. Put the flour in and watch what happens. OK, do you want the flour in there yeah, now, Yeah, go on, please. That's OK, great, then. then. A little bit of flour going in there. And a lot of people say, you know, all you chefs sometimes don't sift the flour. I think in the modern day, ladies and gentlemen, most of them that are actually put into packets now, they've already sort of gone through that process. So you don't need to worry about it. It's not like the old days where the flour was a bit heavy. No, it's super fine, yeah. Yeah. OK. 
OK, now what about that rhubarb down there, false rhubarb? This time of the year, that's all you're going to get is false rhubarb. Exactly. Well, it's is probably it... been grown in, like, um, a, a polytunnel or yeah. something like that. Um, it's got quite tough skin on, hence that's why we're peeling it. Otherwise, that'll get stuck in your teeth and it'll be yeah. horrible. This is Do you a like nightmare. It? This is a nightmare. I know, darling, I've but never uh, you peeled. bought it. <laughs> but I've never peeled you, Mark. <laughs> the only thing I've ever done with... Oh, no, that's going to sound awful, isn't it? What, what we used to do when we were kids, yeah. we used to play... With, these were swords and we did rhubarb thrashing. And I've, I've never peeled rhubarb. Rhubarb sorry. what? Thrashing. Yeah. So we'd have one each. Yeah. And we would sword fight with them until they went all floppy and stringy. And it's all right, Ainsley. They, they don't let her out much. <laughs> <laughs> Mine didn't went floppy. We had to make snapped. our own entertainment as children. I know. Of course, you do something like that. Do you actually grow rhubarb? Then uh, do, you, do you ever go off to one of your sort of allotment or garden places? Do you have any place well, like that? Where you um, I don't at the moment, but I'm on I'm on a waiting list for another one. You're allotment. on waiting. So oh, wow. as soon as Is I get one. Popular at the moment, then. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, growing your own is the way forward. There you go. Yeah. Isn't that fantastic, yeah. ladies and gentlemen? Definitely. So, if you've got a uh, allotment near you and there's a few vacancies, get in there now. It's becoming really, really popular. And it's quite therapeutic too, isn't it? Very good exercise. Yeah. And you're out in the open and you're getting fresh air and it's a good social life. You meet some good people gardening. Really? And, um, yeah. What are you trying to tell me? Look at me. Excuse I'm us. Covered yeah. in have brushes. you ever met anybody at an allotment then, James? Uh, can't say I have, no. No. No, but you don't know. You, don't know you what never know. Look you know, at this. there's, there's, there's that this, yeah, totally fleeting easy. moment as I'm walking past the cabbage Ainsley. And yes, I know. Our eyes would meet <laughs> over the Brussels sprouts. Get off! Let me get the there we are. Let me get it off for you, chef. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. It's got an attitude problem, this yeah. thing here. And look what we've got here. And he's greased it, and he's put a little bit of flour yeah. in there. Why the flour, chef? Fifteen it's minutes to go. Butter and flour, because it would stick otherwise terribly. OK, that's a good tip. Butter and flour. And then he's laced it with a little bit of honey. Or is it honey you've got yeah, there, Yeah, honey, yeah. yeah. Honey and lemons and the rhubarb there. And you're putting the lovely cake mixture on the top. Bake that in the oven, what, 12 minutes? Roughly? Yeah, about 12 to 14 minutes. OK, really well, you've certainly got about that, that amount of time left. Let's go over to the Red Tomato <laughs> Kitchen here with uh, Ross, find out what he's actually doing. <laughs> <laughs> He's having a laugh. You're having a laugh. You're having a laugh. OK, Chef, uh, cooking these potatoes, have you cracked them slightly? Yeah, I've, I've smacked them. I want to brown them. The smacking them lets all the flavours in. We're going to put wine and cumin and, and Moroccan spice, some lemon juice in there. Very interesting. OK. okay. I've got... I'm, I'm, and know, so we're, we're, just... we're being creative. The kitchen's oh, all just... about being creative, mate. Sure. Are you just sorting this off in a little bit of olive oil, then, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. I'm OK. Gonna, I'm, just, I'm going to get this going, then I'll... And uh, believe we've how did you crack them, Chef? Put them in a cloth and just bash them? No, just, just with a rolling pin. Just make sure they don't roll away, that's all. OK, just bash them, basically open them up so they kind of split and they absorb all the lovely flavours that Ross was referring to, those kind of moroccan style flavours. So, 14 minutes, gentlemen, 14. Lemon juice, oh, a little wow. corn flour, some butter, some sugar. Yep, and I'm, t I'm just making a lemon curd to f st stick into my lemon meringue. You see, this is beginning to thicken. If we can get a camera sure. on there, you want that scooped out some more, Chef? Or? They'll never know by the time there's meringue on it. Get, okay. Get in the way. Okay. Right. And then we're going to we're going to <laughs> we're going to infuse this with a little um, okay. with, with some um, egg yolk as well. But we don't I have a lot have of time. No idea what I'm doing here, by the way. Okay. 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 Nice and stiff. Right. I want stiff, 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 stiff. Oh, okay. I'm going yeah. to do that. Just keep stirring it like that. That's okay. it, darling. And it oh, will... I'm afraid he's got the cooking numpty. Yeah, it will get. It will suddenly start, start to expand. It should do, unless you've got to just keep it in there, really move it around. You try to incorporate lots of air into it. Make sure I don't. Uh, pee okay, uh, Ross, very briefly. I do want you to pee. That he was ah. making... Peek away, peek yes, away, peek away. Chef, lemon curd. Tell us about it. What? How did you make this? That's lemon juice thickened with a little um, corn flour. Little corn flour. What? Some butter. Arrow root. Uh, no, it's arrow root actually. And once it's off the heat, we're going to put in our three egg yolks to enrich them. Thank you very yeah. much. Okay. All right, then, and all of us seem to want to go out and buy a jar, don't we, of lemon curd, ladies and oh, gentlemen? Oh, you can make mine at home. Like, obviously, you'd have, you'd have bigger... Um, you'd have better quantities, but... OK. It's so delicious. It's a great way of using leftover lemons. Although, right. with these being citrons, you're more likely, probably, to use them for um, canning for peel to make your Christmas puddings, but you're not going to need those for another 11 months, so you're, no. so you're sorted, really. Lovely. OK. A bit of lemon juice in there. A bit of lemon juice. Did you get a lot of lemon juice out of that? No. No. OK, not as much as you thought. So there's no. more skin than actual lemon. Yeah, but, but, but that's great. Keep going, you're almost there. You're going very well. Yeah, OK. Oh, Is it a bit... Change your arm, love. Change the hand. <laughs> that's <laughs> it. Here we idea. are. And, and sometimes when you get in there... Yeah. It's all in the wrist. OK, all in the wrist action. 12 minutes to go. All right, then. Now, 
We've got lemon curd cooking down. We've got a char grill on here. I think the chef is going to be char grilling this steak. Yeah, Are you marinating that in anything before I go? Uh, no, I'm actually going to char grill the asparagus. I'm going to put the. I'm going to stir fry and make a sticky Chinese steak. Actually. Okay. Do you want them in there now? No, not yet. Thank you. No, okay. they're just to just blanch. They need to blanch, otherwise they won't um, retain the green. Okay. We want to really retain that green colour. All right. Some of the guys just throw it in there, Ross. It's nice. When I come back, Ross, I'm going to talk to you about the old Jerusalem artichokes. As I say, they're not in the same family as globe artichokes. A lot of people get confused. I think it was someone who probably once said that they tasted similar. That's why they've got the same sort of connection there. But very, very different uh, uh, plants entirely there. Uh, do you know what the difference is between the old globe and the Jerusalem artichoke? I haven't a clue. No. You, no. <laughs> no, I don't. I one's just a little tuber. <laughs> but I won't talk to you whilst you're doing that. Let's find out what the chef is doing with his nuts over here. Right, can you give that a shake for me? OK. What are you doing with these? Right, I'm caramelising them all off. And what we're going to do is we're going to put them on a bit of a non-stick parchment afterwards. That helps cool it all down. Yeah. Then we can break it, crumble some on our cheesecake, put some on our crumble, stuff mm. like that. And it's okay. just a, a lovely little uh, just OK, a lovely so little there's a hazelnut that's, uh, hazelnuts that are being caramelised. Over here, there's something really interesting going on in our pot. We've got the vanilla pods. Remember, we consistently talk about that. The flavour, the intense flavour that you get from real vanilla pods is just... You can't beat it. Don't go for the uh, vanilla essence. You can go for the vanilla extract if you're going to buy it, guys. Right, but the ginger essence is, is really rubbish. But just look at that. You can see the combination of all those lovely flavours. What's in there, Chef? Right, so we've got brown sugar in there. Mm. Um, obviously, um, the rhubarb, the vanilla. I've just finished it now with a bit of ginger. Yeah. We're going to cook it down to get it going. Then we're going to give it an oat biscuit topping and there's a quick crumble for you. OK, beautiful. Just cook it down. But don't over-poach exactly, it. Exactly, because it's going to go too soft and too runny. Okay, Into that, we'll actually, just go bl go bl bit of caster okay. sugar in there, please, from Ryan. And we're talking about forced rhubarb here, guys. OK. And the, the thing about it... Halfway, by the way, gentlemen, just past halfway. Sugar's arms. Um, what's that, my darling? How much? Uh, what are you making? Bit of meringue. Are oh, you making meringue? Get it in there. <laughs> Can you pull that back a bit, darling? That's it. Get that in there. Oh, there we are. Really, go back in there again, and we'll see. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Quite a lot of sugar. You do need quite a lot of sugar for meringue. Make no mistake. A lot of people think, oh no, it's not. You're going to be dividing up amongst a lot of portions here, guys. Twenty to fifty. I like this. Fifty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifty. Yeah. Right. Okay. There we are. What's your nuts here, chef? Are you all right there? No, right? this is when it starts to come. Let me show you now. Okay. Keep, keep moving it, Ains. Yeah, I am keep moving it. Some of them right. are a bit black. No, that's all right. That's cool. Right, yeah. lay it right out across there now. Right, and then we're going to leave that right up to the end. We, we can bash that up, we can split that up with yeah. everything. Brilliant. OK, Chef, lovely. Ooh. There you go. No, 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 let no. me have a little bit of a go at oh, that go here. On, OK, so have you won any awards for your uh, gardening design? I have. Some you should ask, I have. I've won a gold medal at the Bath of West End for my garden design. Yeah. And um, um, it was a recycled garden, everything was recycled. So, uh, and, and, and how much did you actually recycle then? Give us an idea. Are we, are we just talking about recycling bits of furniture or something to do with the plants? What Sorry. did you actually do? No, we had um, bicycle wheels with beans growing up them for trellis. Um, I made a garden they path. They were like creepers and stuff yeah. going up them. And they were all kind of welded Millie. together. Um, yeah. We had a, um, the garden path was made of um, bottle tops and it spelt out reduce, reuse, recycle. It wound up to the little wow, garden shed. How creative is that, eh? And Brilliant. garden tyre planters, and everything mm. was edible. Even the flowers were edible. Everything you could eat, everything. So you certainly you deserved. Gold. Was, that, was that the very first time you won a gold Absolutely. award? Absolutely. Yeah. And how first did that time feel? I, really, it was the whole experience was fantastic. Yeah. Definitely, I'd do it again. Given the opportunity, I'd do it again. Uh -huh. so, yeah, it's good. And fun. this was uh, what? What show was this? Was the, it uh, the Bath and West show? The Bath and West show. Yeah. <laughs> Thought you'd never ask. Jeff. <laughs> The Bath um, and West Show, this is something that takes place annually, does it? It does indeed in Shepton Mallet, and it's mm. um, like the big agricultural show for the southwest region. Um, ooh, Fab. spilling me. Oh, just crack, break up a few with your hands first, love. There you go. Okay. And uh, how do you combine the two jobs then? Is, is it one that's quite therapeutic, one that just allows you to switch off because the other one's a bit stressful? Um, no, I think, as I said, it's too much fun working in sexual yeah. health, so I need to chill out one day a week. Um, ultimately, when I've finished the course, what I'd like to do is get into therapeutic horticulture. So yeah. I'm still using some of my nursing counselling skills, skills and stuff, yeah. um, but working 
um, with people with plants. Interesting line of work. Cool. Very, very nice indeed. Nice talking to you. We will talk again. Uh, what have we got here? Let's find out. I think the chef is making a, one of his own little sort of chocolate sauces here, chef. What? And that's just the water and cocoa powder, chef? Water, cocoa powder, sugar. Take it down, reduce it down. This okay. is going to go over cheesecake because we're going to put white chocolate ice cream, dark yeah. chocolate sauce on the cheesecake, yeah? Beautiful. Also, um, we've got the sponge cooking, which is actually... Yeah, looking really good. That's, you see how it's almost there? Now watch. You push yeah. with your finger so it's not rising. Yeah. You know you've got a couple more minutes. OK. Do we reduce the heat there then, Chef? Down to 200. All right, then. All Down right? to 200. Really good little tips here, guys. I will right, come back okay. and see you. Let's right. go back to the Red Tomato Kitchen. Oh, hey, mate. How are you Oh, fantastic. Is there any ginger left? Remember I said there might be a ginger. bit of ginger. Have you got a little bit of ginger left there, Chef? Uh. Doesn't matter, yeah. doesn't matter. Don't need you. I've got a tiny bit. There yeah, you just, go. Just a little bit I think you've just fished it out of the bin. No, I'll, I'll, I'll wash it off for you. It's uh, yeah. strategically yeah. placed to the yeah. side, You can't get the chefs these days. It's called, can the, you, it's called the stock pot, Ames. Here we are, mate. There Thanks we are. Thanks very the much. Stock pot that, indeed. I just wanted exactly that much. Yeah. And you can just chop that up. What are you using that for? And tell us what's melting here before I start talking to Charlotte. Because it right. looks very interesting. That's going to be our fonduta, our fondue of porcelain. Mm-hmm. Charlotte, could you, when you've done that, could yep. you wash those for me, please? No problem. That'd be super. Thank you very much. Okay. Get it done. All yeah. right. And tell us about oh, those Jerusalem artichokes, Chef. You okay. They slice them up. Okay. They're called um, Jerusalem artichokes because they follow the sun. They are girasole in Italian. Yeah. Or girasol. Yes. Well, oh, say they, that again. They started off being girasol. <laughs> now, now, now in French they're called topandour, mm. but because they gira to turn around the sun, saw that they're actually sunflowers. Okay. They're relatives of the sunflower. So, it's n as I said, nothing to do with the globe artichoke. Absolutely nothing. Which is a thistle, you see. Okay. That's and you can eat it, you it raw, that guys. Me. Sometimes you know you hear about these things. You can eat it raw. So uh, very thinly sliced, of course. Uh, you'd normally get a sort of a, you know, sometimes a purpley or a bit of a beige skin. Like we had today, we had the beige skin ones. You can slice them or you can salty them off. And they add a kind of a, a bit of a nuttiness to your stir fries. So uh, really worth investing in that. Uh, tell us about that little Okay, this is, this is, this is a little bit of a carbonara. That, that's um, the hot asparagus uh -huh. with some egg yolk, lemon juice and seasoning. Okay. Which is going to cook onto those. So we're showing the lemon and its full, fullness there. Okay, and um, we've got five minutes to go. These these are the artichokes cooking down here. What will they? How will you feed them? They're, they're going to become a lemon and artichoke soup. Okay. And look at the chef not worrying at all. Do you like your steak nice? He should and... be. He should be worried with me cooking. Really? <laughs> Why, what do you want to do, love? You want to <laughs> I'm going to shred this, have I? This, this bit yeah, here. Yeah, into very that fine bit. shreds, please, my okay. old love. Let me oh, just. Let, let's get, where's your board there? Pop, pop your chopping board there, darling. That'd help, wouldn't it? Mm. Okay. And uh, what about you? Have you won any awards for your designs? Yes, um, I, th that's how I sort of really got on, um, started getting on well with Millie, actually, because we both did the gardens together and I won a gold as well for my, oh, my garden. Oh, and what was so your garden design like? My garden was kind of a more spiritual garden. I did a Japanese garden with yeah. everything that Millie hates, decking, gravel. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right, Millie? She's, Do you yeah, hate all you that don't stuff? Get on, I don't, not don't when get Charlotte on gravel. does it, no, no. <laughs> it was quite good when it was all done. <laughs> but, uh, I had, it was all very feng shui and it had a yeah. water feature and everything going and I used to rake the gravel every morning, get up so, at six. So what inspired you to, to, to get into this? Because originally you were in advertising, weren't I you, was, right? I yes, was, yeah. yes. I was selling advertising space over the phone, which is a, not the most inspiring of jobs. Mm. Um, and I had a bit of an epiphany at the age of 30 and decided mm. I wanted to get into gardening. Yeah. Um, my parents have a beautiful garden and it's got lots of tree houses and summer houses. So it's been there from a very young age. Yeah, yeah. From, from, you know, since I was a child, I've been yeah. helping them out. And uh, one, of the, one of the things in there is a, my father built for my 21st and my mother's 50th, although she'd like me to say her 40th. Mm -hmm. um, a tree house. Yeah. And it was actually opened for, by a, a close family friend of ours at the time, uh, the late Ronnie Barker. Ronnie Barker? Yeah. You remember him, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Yes, everybody does. Yeah. Anybody that tickles your bones. Oh, he was lovely. He was the best tickler was real, in the business, wasn't he? He was. And he was funny in real life, yeah. too, because everyone yeah, wants I'm to sure. know that. I'm yeah. Sure. yeah. Now, you say you went to advertising. You say you're, you're a bit in the bit of a blagging business, oh, were you? Yeah, I'm always doing and that, yeah. When I remember all my <laughs> friends in advertising, they blag their way into people's parties. Did you any, any good parties? Yeah, you about ten to? years ago, um, boyfriend I was going out with at the time. Three minutes! <laughs> That's, yeah. that the relationship lasted, actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, dear. Um, yeah, he liked his food. Wasn't any good. <laughs> no, <laughs> bless him. Um, he uh, bet me 20 quid that I couldn't get into this party that was um, done, uh, being hosted by Elton John. Oh, wow. So it was in London at the Versace showrooms. Mm. And so I, I got in, and not only did I get it, get me in, but I managed to get loads of tickets and get the, my him oh, and my parents bad, in. Bad, it Who was, was there? Who did night. you rub shoulders well, with? Well, obviously there was Elton John. It was, um, there were people like Paula Yates when she was still alive, yeah. Bob Gell. Off. There was Oasis, there was George Michael, mm. um, all the all the top models at the time, Naomi fantastic. Campbell. It's just oh, nice being 
getting close to people like that. I was like, everyone was saying, who are you? Because I was the only one that wasn't famous. <laughs> I'm an advertising darling. Yeah, I'm an advertising. I'm a model. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, shut up, you. <laughs> you wear it. Did you wear it, Chuck? I did, I did. The shreds are going in the bin. Now. Okay, we've got two minutes left to go. <laughs> and uh, potatoes are cooking down. Remember, Ross smashed these. Right, and he infused them in loads of lovely flavours. Well, that's fine, that's fine. We've got okay. the old cumin seeds in there. They're all cooking down. Smell how aromatic that is, not. Oh. Can you smell that? Oh, that's divine. Yeah, that's wonderful. Just mm. so, so easy. Just literally put that lid on top. You've got the combination of the steam and everything cooking yeah. down. The juice is actually coming out the tatty. Really mm, goes well. Lovely. Just keep shaking that pan. Gorgeous. We've got a lovely little mixture of sesame seed and the lemon and everything going on here. We've got a fondue. Shall I pop that in oh, the Oh, I love fondue. Just yeah, that'd be that great. Going. I'm trying to do it carefully. Oh, I know you did, but we've got to literally... Oh, that's quick, just... Ross! Hey, it's black! Get oh. it out! <laughs> Hey, put Will loads you? of icing sugar on top of it. Yeah, that'll cover it. Yeah, I'm coming back to oh, see you, are. James. There we are. All right, then. I'm standing yeah. here like a bit of a lemon. All right, don't worry about <laughs> it, darling. Shake, shake, <laughs> shake. Oh, shake. Shake. Oh. Up in the air, shake. All right, love, don't cover me up. There you go. I'm a bit carried down. away. And there we are. <laughs> the music is kicking in, ladies and gentlemen. That means the chefs have to get their food out now. Okay, They're really buzzing, trying to get it all out on time. Please. OK, there we are. Beautiful. OK, there you go. 40 seconds to go. Remember, audience, you're voting for what the chefs did with the ingredients they were given. Think about that. We've got beautiful, just look at that cheese. Love cheesecake with that lovely, lushy chocolate sauce there. We've got ice cream sitting on, nestled on top there of that's our single, crumble. We've got another meringue there. Look that's at this, it really is just coming alive there. On your All left. sorts of left, lovely food. Left. All right, on 15 seconds to go. Audience, right. get ready to help me count down now. Yeah. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stop. going on here today, ladies and gentlemen. And to remind you of what our chefs had in their bag, James Tanner started off with some nice forced rhubarb, mascarpone cheese, a packet of oat biscuits, white chocolate ice cream, fresh ginger and hazelnut. Whilst Ross Burden had sirloin steak, new potatoes, port salut cheese, Jerusalem artichokes, asparagus, shallots, and they both had a whole lot of lemon. Oh, lovely. <laughs> loads and loads of lemons all over the place today. And I have to say, this looks rather exotic, and uh, you're off to Nepal indeed. soon, aren't you? I am indeed, yes, yeah. very soon, very soon. I'm going to Nepal, I'm raising money for Mind, and I'm trekking, um, which means I have to do lots of walking. Well, good <coughs> luck hills. to you. I hope you get lots of support so, for that. Thank uh, you. Talking about uh, it being a little bit exotic, what are you going to call this then, Chef? Well, I'm going to say that well, um, just go in, just it's just nuts, this? but this is sour dish of the day. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, all right, all right. What did you do? Right, OK, so we did a sponge, but we cooked it. We didn't cook it in the microwave. We did a tray sponge pudding. So it's honey, Is it lovely? rhubarb, the lemon, and a very, very light... It should be quite a light sponge, mm. not a heavy sponge. Just mm. finished with a bit of vanilla cream, mm. creme fleurette. What made it light, then? Is it the, no, it's the air, extra eggs? It's the, the air and the eggs and mm. cooking it not too fast, but cooking it gradually over the time. So you leave mm. it to rise. Yeah, it's, okay. it's the whole raising agent thing from the flour. Okay, she's tucking mm. for cheesecake. How we've did you make that, Chef? dark chocolate sauce. We've got cheesecake with a mascarpone, some cream, some ice oh. sugar as well. Also in there, we've got the base, which is obviously our oatmeal biscuits that we've used at the base. Mm. Crushed them up, pushed them down, finished with caramelised hazelnuts Beautiful. on top. top over here, we've got I'm a crumble. Go now, this is rhubarb with ginger. I'll put some hazelnuts in there as well, and an oatmeal or oat cake top as well, finished with vanilla ice cream. Mm. So you get very quick crumble. Now in here, this is the pièce de la résistance. Yeah. We have, you bash through the meringue and then all of a sudden you get your crumb at the bottom and a baked Alaska with your vanilla ice cream oh, inside. Wow. So let mm -hmm. me just... No, I won't. You do it. Go on then. I've got a mouthful of nuts here, hang on. Before you do that, Ooh, are you sorry. impressed? No, oh god, yeah. Mm. No, this is better than thrashing it, clearly. <laughs> rhubarb. <laughs> yes, makes What is she good. like? <laughs> thrashing it. I'll thrash it with your I think rhubarb. she likes them. Well, well done, that's <laughs> fantastic. Brilliant. Over to you, Charlotte. Your turn. Pick up your cutlery, have okay, a bit of a go. Yes. Chef, what are you going to call it? 
Well, I'm not taking the pith or anything, but we did get shallots of lemons. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Some shallots? Oh, yeah, absolutely, they were mm. there. What did you do with your ingredients, oh, Ross? Fine. Well, first of all, we, we took apart this fantastic citron. We made a real um, lemon curd. Mm. We put this very... This is chocolate um, cocoa um, meringue on it, which is baked in the oven. It's very difficult to do that, ladies and gentlemen, mm. without using cocoa. There you go. We, <laughs> you can get under there. Look, it's uh, supposed to look like that, by the way. Look at look, that. that. Lovely, lovely oh, lemon curd. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Then we used the, then we use the lemon, the lemon in all its ways. So we use yeah. the zest, we use the juice, we use the leaves. And so how did you use it, Chef? Tell us. We broke, we broke into the into the um, t uh, potatoes, got them cooking, then white wine and lemon juice, salt, cumin, and let them steam in their own oh, jacket. A lovely so bit of crusted cumin sitting on the top. So that, of that that's plate. a nice acidic really sort of flavour. Really then we took the asparagus, we, oh, we blanched gorgeous. it, then we char grilled it, then we made that carbonara sauce mm. with the lemon juice and egg yolks over the top with some zest. Mm. We made a fonduta out of lemon juice and white wine and cheese. And, and cream and garlic and shallots. Mm. We made a stir fry out of the beef with soy and honey and sesame seeds and, and the shredded uh, lemon leaves. And you just um, salted that off with that, with that lovely lemon And flavor. a little bit of honey to finish it off. And Ooh, then we made the, the, um, yeah. the, the parsley and artichoke soup also flavoured with lemon juice and olive oil. So we used the lemon in many, many, many ways. Mm. Oh, that is divine. And what do you think? Oh, God. Oh, can I marry you? Oh, <laughs> yes. Take you home with me. That oh, is... Oh, we'll, we'll, do, we'll, do, we'll do a trial period. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to say, ladies and gentlemen, both our chefs oh, have lovely. excelled themselves in the old lemon department, haven't they? But have they done sufficiently to win the audience vote? What's it going to be, a red tomato or a green pepper? Let's find out. Will you all please vote now? And up they go. And just look at this. You can see today it's a green oh. pepper day! There you go. £100 spending money there for you. Well, that's all going to mine, so top out. Thank you very much. So, where's that going towards? It's going to uh, mine, the mental health charity. That's really no, lovely of you. Top shout. Thank, Thank you very much indeed. Well done to you, Chef. Thanks. Pretty good. I thought it would go towards her Nepal trip, but she's going to another charity. Yes. And uh, you don't go home empty-handed, Charlotte. We've got a lovely, really silly cook hamper for you. All sorts of lovely goodies oh, in there. Great. Um, I'm hoping to auction it off for my charity, which is the Royal National Hospital for Rheumatic Diseases in Bath. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Brilliant. Thanks okay. very much indeed. Great having you on the programme. Thank you. Okay, come and join us over here, guys. What are you doing? Pick up your puds. Get them over here. We have got a quickie bag to have a look at, haven't we, yeah, ladies and gentlemen? Exactly. In the meantime, let's say a very big thank you to our horticultural Thanks. gold medalist, Million Charlotte. <laughs> so naughty. <laughs> He's so naughty, our Rossi. I'll tell you, ladies and gentlemen. OK, oh, I've got to be careful. There's a certain glass jar in there, isn't there? We've got a nice a bit of celery there. We've got some black uh, pitted olives, along with some cannellini beans, feta cheese, chorizo and tomatoes. Oh, it's a bit of a uh, kind of Mediterranean yeah. mix here, isn't there? Eh? Mm -hmm. What do you think, Ross? What would you like to do with that? Uh, I'd make a Greeky salad mm -hmm. uh, with the green and the beans and the tomatoes and, and olives and feta. I'd bake the feta with... Because we, we did this a while ago on the show. It wasn't me that did it. I think it was Tony who did it. But he baked it with olive oil, garlic and oregano, and it was so yummy. Mm -hmm. um, make a stew of tomatoes, beans and, and chorizo, and then do something my mother used to do 100 years ago for, for canapes and pipe the celery <laughs> with a cream cheese mixture. <laughs> oh. With paprika to make it posh. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I'd love to have gotten to that part. Party, wouldn't you? Oh. It, was, it was like Abigail's. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, what are you going to do then, uh, James? Well, Ainsley, I was thinking of. <laughs> right, so we'll do a cannellini bean soup, but a broth, OK? Mm. And into that, we use some of the celery. We could do some feta croutons as well. Then we could also do some crostinis using the tomatoes and olives, but take the feta, melt it down into mm. a lemon feta sauce that you drizzle over the top. Yeah. There's a fondue to you can use there, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll nick that. Then we use uh, some chorizo. We could do um, like a frittata using mm. a lot of the ingredients. And um, yeah, well, that's quite a lot to uh, get on with. Certainly a lot. And it's a 10 minute period that our chefs have to produce this, ladies and gentlemen. What do our audience want to see? The green mm. peppers or the red tomatoes? Go on, let me know. Will you all please vote now? And up they go. Oh, and I think one, yeah. they want to see what you can do with your calamata olives. There you yeah, go. so they realise the error of their jolly ways. Yeah. That's what they yeah. do. So look at that. Right. Let's get cooking! <laughs> oh, OK, Jeff. Your ten minutes cooking time starts.
Now, let's do it. I'm going to get on with the feta. If you'd be so kind as to peel the treath and peel some garlic for me. Okay, garlic and treath on the way. Do you If I give you a rib or two of this, yeah, and then I'll give you a bit of this. If you make a mousse for me, yep, and I'll fill these up. Yeah, and don't forget the paprika. Give it a good old piping. All right, okay. OK, cannellini beans drained. White Italian beans. They're sometimes known as white, white kidney beans, ladies and gentlemen, too, the old cannellini beans. Wonderful. Tom, I love sort of cooking, Tom, cooking those mind. down. There you go. And what, about, what does feta mean in Greek, then? Is it something to do with slice or something, isn't it? No, in, in Italian, feta means to cut, like fettuccine. Yeah. Um, I so it means I, the same, I think, in Greece, it just it means to slice. slice. Yeah. I, I have to get say, a knife. I'm, halloumi, I'm not that keen on, but I love this stuff. I think it's absolutely delicious. Why? What? What? what, what do you find this... halloumi too rubbery, or...? Yeah, I, it, it is a bit rubbery. I, th I think it must be the saltiness of this that I really like. Mm. I think it's delicious. We don't have any fresh oregano, so just a tiny bit of dry, because it is much um, stronger. But don't... You know... The, the soft herbs dried are rubbish, mm -hmm. but the hard herbs dried are very good. Yeah, you know, I sage totally and agree. rosemary, they're perfectly good. We want mm. some pepper doodah. Even a bit of the old thyme's not too bad, is no, it? No, thyme's good, sage, mm -hmm. rosemary. But much more concentrated, isn't it? So you use about a third yeah, of exactly. the amount. Yeah. All right, but guys. To Tobes made this. That was absolutely delicious. How much garlic do you want, Chef? Uh, just a, well, a, just that's probably enough, thanks, mate. Okay. If you want to, we're just going to get a little bit done for the. Um, for the cathedral, for the mm -hmm. stew. Mm -hmm. so you put a little bit of lemon juice, lemon zest onto here, a little bit of garlic. I swear, it was just the most... And the contestants went very sort of mushy at that point. It's yeah. So, it's just so delicious. <coughs> We're going to do some tapenade toast with that possibly later as well. Let's bake that. Oh, a bit of toast. All right, then. I don't mind doing okay. a bit of that for you. OK. Now, why do you want this peeled, then, Ross? Uh, well, because the skin's indigestible. The skin's probably made of paper in that case, because it's commercial. It's not made of... Um, it's not like pork that we, we would u normally use. OK. That's why we're sort of peeling that down. And what have we got James Tanner doing? James, tell us about what you're right, actually well, making Right, well, I'm crumbling there. up some feta. I'm going to add some paprika to it. I'm going to add a bit of yoghurt to it as well, and we're going to pipe it into the celery. I've just uh, peeled the celery, though, because, I, Ross, that's right, yeah, I don't want any, you don't want any bits when we eat it, right? Yeah, that's so right. So I've peeled that's... off the sinew. I've got a bit of celery over here, and I'm just sauceing it down. I'm going to put some garlic in there, chicken stock cube. If I can nick a bit of that chorizo, I'm going to do a chorizo and celery broth. Yeah, I really actually nice. love it when I cook it down with a bit of leek and potato. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Just yeah. Fantastic. You just drop it in all those uh, some of them are spicier than others guys don't think you're just buying one variety and that's the end of it you know there's a whole lot of them how many would you say are out there Ross different types of treats well there's, there's two main type well I guess there are four but the two two types of sub subgroups one is the picante which is the uh, hot mm. and one is the dolce or, 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 or normale mm -hmm. but there's the thing to remember is the two the more importantly the two types are the, are the eating I know it sounds silly but the eating chorizo and the cooking tree this is cooking tree though it's made of lower grade meat yeah uh, so it needs to be cooked, whereas the slicing one you can just slice up and use away. Need so, so, so don't use the slicing one for cooking, really. Just okay. use, use the eating one. Wonderful. Bit of fresh mint in there, Chef? Oh, that'd be fantastic. A little Lovely. parsley as well would be great. OK, a little bit of chopped parsley. Make it quite chunky. Mint. It's sort of it's redolent of being in, in Greece, really, isn't it? It's incredibly really. delicious. And do, do, do you feel a lot healthier when you're in the sunshine or just sexier? Well, you have to. The only trouble with going to the sunshine, you have to spend about four four months going to the gym so you can wear your trunks, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could just pack a chorizo. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say, "You calling me fat?" <laughs> Lovely. Do you go to the gym before you go to the beach then, James? No, I just go to the beach, really. Really? Yeah. There you go, eh? It would all change soon, wouldn't it, Ross? Yeah, exactly. Uh, straight in all there, goes, Yeah, well done. All, all goes up. south when you hit 30. I know. That's a that's little whippersnapper. OK. I, I, I'm 30. <laughs> oh! <laughs> what, waste? White, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just look over here. <laughs> there, take some trees. Have you got some trees? I've got some trees. Nice yeah. man. OK, there we are. Halfway now, and the question today comes from Jeff Moles from Ben Fleet in Essex. Good afternoon to you, Jeff. He said, I wonder if you chefs uh, could point me in the right direction and tell me how to choose a good quality knife. What should I be looking for, and roughly, what should I pay? Do you want to first start off on that, James? Yeah, Talk OK, about... cool. Right, well, knives, right, are very important and the most important thing in any kitchen. And also, knives can last you almost a lifetime. If you spend that little bit extra and prepared to spend that little bit extra, 
Guarantee. I mean, I've got some Anderson, knives that I've had for Bruschetti. literally 15, 15 to 16 years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, for example, this one. I know it's a bit dirty. Excuse me. Cut up cheese. It's got a good weight to it. Um, a chef's knife, an all-round chef's knife, should have a good weight to it. Mm -hmm. Good weight in the handle. It should yeah. help make sure it feels great in the palm of your hand. Make sure it's got a good balance to it, Ains. Look, yeah. a nice weight to it as well. It's very okay. important. OK, OK. And it, honestly, though, if you look after them, don't put them through the dishwasher and stuff like that. It blunts it. Never do that. Always keep the edge on it, and when I say the edge, that's the actual sharpness of the bottom of the blade. OK. And um, it will last you for years if you and look after it. And people often say, well, I, I don't know about you guys, but they, I've always been brought up with, as soon as you finish using your knife, just give it a quick rub Definitely. on the steel. And that just keeps it yep. lovely and, and then, sharp. And then just to clean them, spray them, uh, mm. maybe with a bit of sterilising spray, wipe them down and then put them away in a drawer somewhere. Sure. Right, now, uh, Ross, perhaps you can answer this. Does it, it being expensive mean it's going to be better quality? Generally, yes. Yeah. Um, I, I always say it's much better to have two good knives. Well, all you need is that, ladies and gentlemen. A big one and a small one. Yeah, OK. Rather than 57 ones for different shapes. Big one for, for doing the big jobs, small one for doing the small jobs. A nice rounded blade so that when you're working on the, on the board, you've got that roll. So you don't get tired, you see. Yeah. If you've got a straight blade or, or a light knife, you do lots of chopping, you risk it sore. You want nice rolling and a nice sharp knife. And, and a better quality one is going to, is going to actually going to keep a, um, a proper blade. OK. Whereas the, the cheaper ones... Tend Fantastic. To sort of... And what about and this that... knife, Chef? Tell us about this, because this is a particular... This is a Japanese-style knife. Very expensive, but it does belong to Ross. Briefly touch us on that. It's Japanese sushi knife, and you can tell the folding of the steel because it's got an uneven edge. And it's made in the same way as a samurai sword, basically. Yeah. But, that, you know, a really good knife will last you for... I've got knives that... And they're not pretty enough to use on telly, but I've got knives I had since 1988. That's almost 20 years, so... OK. You know. One and a half minutes to go now, guys. Let's keep this going. This olive oil, this is just looking absolutely lovely. Stu's just cooking down. OK, beautiful. OK, tapenade. So, the uh, basic ingredients for the tapenade, the garlic, the parsley, the olive oil, the good-quality uh, olives, Chef? Yeah, good-quality olives. Black um, olives and, and anchovies, ideally, as well. Yeah. But we don't have any anchovies, so tough. Um, but these are kalamata, which are delicious Greek olives, which have been um, pitted. They're not black pitted olives. Black pitted olives are green olives that have been pitted and then t dyed black. They're rubbish. OK. There you go. Think about that, guys, when you go out and buy your olives. Better still, go to your deli and try olives. You know, I've, I've actually took my wife to a deli and she said, I hate olives, I hate them. And she went in there, she started trying and said, that's different. Yes, because there's so many different varieties and they infuse them with all sorts of different flavours. So try that out. Let's get this food out now, guys. All right, then. Beautiful. How's that cheese doing, Ains? That's looking brilliant. I'm going to get that out for you now, Chef. OK. Beautiful. Here we are. Now, this is just cooked in that lovely olive oil. It's sizzling. Feast your eyes on that little lot there. There's another plate for it. So, right? so yummy. Do you want it on one of these plates, Chef? Thank you very much. OK, there we are. Beautiful. All right, let's keep this going. <clears throat> Here we go. Oh, just get ready to help me count down. Yeah, anchovies. Lots of people say they don't like Ten, anchovies, but they're so nine, delicious. Eight, seven, Ten, six, five, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stop! And look at that, you can see how the, uh, that paprika, the chorizo, all, all that lovely paprika oil has come out of there. What are you going to call it before we uh, t talk about uh, what you did here, Chef? Odd. It was tapenade. <laughs> 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 OK, what did you do with the ingredients? We made a stew out of garlic and celery and oil and wine and the chorizo and olives and beans and, and what have you, which mm. simmered down. We baked the uh, mm. feta with those lemon, the lemon oil and, and the oregano and garlic and what have you. We made the, galax, uh, the Greek salad with the tapenade on the side to spread on these toasts here, which was beautiful. Really and we need a few olives in the old Greek salad. Can we nick a few of these? Yeah, why not? Go on. Yeah, just pop one or two of those there. Should have had a couple of the old olives in the Greek. What about that uh, lovely infused kind of broth that you got there? Well, right, well, obviously, thanks to us, I've got the beans, I've got the chorizo, I've got the celery in there. I used onion um, chives rather because I got a bit of an onion flavour, but mm. chicken stock. Then we, I've, I seared off the chorizo separately so they all splits. Mm. And then over here we've got the feta cheese, bit of lemon, some paprika, and then thinned it out of yogurt. Piped in, but they've been obviously uh, peeled off so you don't get any sinew in your teeth, and that's simple. Very nice indeed, and hope we've given you one or two cooking ideas. That's what we're here for, ladies and gentlemen. Indeed, you can check out CFAX or our website, bbc.co.uk forward slash food, for all the, the lovely recipes our chefs have prepared on the show today. Till next time, hey, do join us. Take care. Bye bye. bye.